Hi everyone, welcome to Tasty Tuesday. Today we are making a very delightful dish, great for Thanksgiving weekend. It is called a cauliflower vegetable in coconut sauce. Lots of variations here. I got this recipe or inspired by this recipe from one of my fave teachers, um, Divya, um, and she lives in the city. She has a restaurant there, highly recommend. Um, so we're gonna talk about all, <laughs> excuse me, the ingredients in the soup. So we have the cauliflower, known as the main dish, even though there's loads of vegetables. And then I have my spinach. Okay, this is, guess what this is? I want to see you guys here, okay? And then I have my ginger. Now, there's two ingredients. Hi, Jackie, so happy to see you there. I so you already read your blog and looked at the recipe. It looks delicious. You would love this recipe. This is great for Thanksgiving dinner. It's a little more intricate than a simple dish, but it is worth it. Now, in the recipe, I call for a few things. Either a curry leaf. There's eight curry leaves in this recipe. Very difficult to find. I couldn't even find it myself. But the alternative are either parsnips or sweet potatoes. So, or something like that citrusy. So I used a lemon um, skin. So I took my, my contraptions to peel the skin off the lemon, as you can see over here. So I just peel it because curry, so you have to understand, curry leaves are different than curry powder. Curry leaves have, has this like beautiful sweet and bitter aroma and taste. So you get that from the citrus. And I also included some leaves in here, um, but this is like really, really amazing. Um, any questions about these vegetables I ha and these herbs? I have details on my blog, please read them. They're like so interesting. Okay, so now I have my parsnip instead of my curry leaves, very different. And curry leaves actually grow on a tree called the neem tree. For some of you that might have used it before, um, it is a lifesaver for skin. You could eat it. They have it at health food stores. It's becoming more popular. You could even find neem, which is curry leaves from a tree, um, in, more rest, uh, in more stores. Um, interesting about the curry leaves, which I did not read about, yes, the curry leaves, again, are very different than curry powder. So curry powder look, has this color. You'll find it in um, like Indian restaurants or um, Asian restaurants, but the curry leaves are extremely different and have a different taste. But again, it's a little challenging to find, but there's alternatives. And then I have my green beans. And today I am using ghee. You could use coconut oil or ghee. I'm using ghee. I'm just so excited to use. This is the only dairy I will eat. It has so many medicinal properties in it. And then I have my, guess what this is? Can you guess? Okay, so this is coconut milk. You could also use um, a few other like nuts, like cashews. I personally do not eat cashews. Um, so I'm using this instead, which is coconut milk. Delicious. It's a very popular Thai um, dish. Did read this on your blog, but did not know about curry leaves before reading this. Yeah, coconut milk. It's amazing. Okay, and I know you're vegan, 
Jackie, so you don't, um, obviously, you're not going to be using ghee, even though ghee does not have any of the, the la you know, the lactose and any of the dairy that you would get in butter, but you could use something else instead, like coconut oil. And then I have my delicious aromatic spices and herbs. I have my rosemary. I have my uh, cardamom, turmeric, and my Himalayan salt. So let's begin. This is a process. I'm very, very excited. I'm eating it for lunch today, for a late lunch, and then I plan to use it for the weekend of Thanksgiving. Very, very excited. So I'm gonna take my ghee, and I'm gonna place the ghee in the pot. And it melts really, really quickly. And what's interesting is that ghee has a very high heat, heating mechanism, so like it doesn't burn, which you don't want. Some of the oils burn. No, -uh, you want to stay away from that. Okay, now I'm going to be adding turmeric as my first spice. Turmeric, then cumin. Then rosemary, coriander, and salt. I'm just going to just sit here, look at the color. I already have that beautiful aroma taste. You want to always include the spices. There's a technique. But let's, not, let's go beyond the pepper and the salt, okay? Like, let's just kind of add more spices and herbs, especially at different times of the year. Okay, that's beautiful. Now I'm going to be adding my, let's see what I got, oh, my ginger. Okay, so I minced two teaspoons of ginger. I even made myself some tea with dandelion for my ginger, for my uh, tea from ginger. Mmm, delicious. I cut up a lot of ginger. Smells amazing. And now I am going to be adding, instead of curry leaves, I'm going to be adding my other alternatives. Beautiful. Smells delicious. And you want to keep it at a low heat so nothing burns. You're just bringing out the aroma from the ingredients. And now I'm going to be adding parsley instead of taro. The taro um, roots are amazing in this dish. But again, if it's difficult to find, you could always use um, parsnip, sweet potatoes. But I've been using a lot of sweet potatoes, so I kind of want to give it a little uh, change. Although I love parsnip in my soup, especially my chicken soup. Smells so good. Are you, you're so cute. It smells so good. Okay. Okay, this is awesome. Let's see what else we're gonna add. Okay, so from here, we're gonna be adding the coconut. So this is what's gonna give you the liquid in the soup instead of water because you want this dish to be very nice and thick. The picture is on my blog, so you get a sense of what this dish looks like. It's not soup. This is just like a nice liquid. That's why it's called a coconut sauce. I'm just gonna mix it in. I'm gonna raise the temperature. I'm gonna speed up the process a little bit here. Now this is going to cook for about 20 minutes. You want everything to get nice and soft. Okay, then, so this is about like 10, 20 minutes, but I'm going to continue the process. So I'm going to be adding some carrots. Okay, so you want a lot of colors. Okay, this looks so gorgeous. I, I just can't. I, I, I just love colors in my food. You want to eat the rainbow. Okay, beautiful. Then you want to add the beans. So I chopped up, this is like a full bean. I just chopped it up into like little half inch slices. 
my gosh, if you go to these fancy restaurants, Thai restaurant or Indian restaurant, even Asian restaurants, this is what you're getting. Beautiful. Make a little high because you want to bring everything to a boil and then once it's boiling, we're going to simmer it down. Okay. Then from here, we're going to add some cauliflower. I um, cut the cauliflower florets really, really tiny. I only used one cup of cauliflower. So I'll have the rest from my big, big vat of cauliflower for another recipe. Oh, this looks so good. Okay. Now, as you see, I have my spinach here that I cut really small, but the spinach is always the last thing to add to a dish, um, whether it's a soup or one of these types of dishes, because spinach cooks really, really quickly, and because there's a lot of liquid in here, you, you just don't want to like um, ruin the beauty of spinach and the and the aroma and the taste of the spinach and of course the nutrition so you definitely want to uh, put, uh, heat it up at the end now this is a very very light leaf okay, I think I left some of the some of the cauliflower too big and I want them to be small I like serving the cauliflower in tiny little florets beautiful now this dish also calls for a garnish. You could also either garnish it with um, like parsley or another type of herb. Um, pick your choice. But this is probably not gonna be ready until a later and I will be demonstrating that a little later in my um, blog and the Facebook page. So let's look at, see what this looks like. I'm going to be putting a cover into this and letting it cook. Let's just keep it here. Now while it's cooking a bit, I actually want to put a cover on it. Just bear with me. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so while it's cooking a little bit more, I just want to talk to you a little bit about what I included in my blog, which has to do with the essentials in a kitchen. I told you it's a four part series. So today is all about the essentials that you want in your kitchen to make life really easy. So one of them, as I showed you, is this contraption where I peel like the lemon skin. It's like a zest or all the things that need to be peeled at a very, very tiny little um, piece so it doesn't like bite into the actual fruit or vegetable. Another thing that is essential in this house, I call it my tawashi. I just found another one. Um, so you just take your vegetables and you just clean your vegetables really, really well. I don't like to put them um, I, I just don't want to drain them and I certainly don't want to peel my vegetables, especially if they're organic. So this is an essential piece. They sell them at any store, practically. Um, and then I have my paring knife. So the paring knife cuts vegetable, uh, fruits, tiny little vegetables, little pieces. I love this paring knife. And then I have my uh, knife that I chop with, which is being clean right now, and my serrate. My serrated knife, which is in my drawer here, is this long baby. I love this serrate. I use it to cut my, my breads, my challahs, um, or if you have a big piece of, um, I don't know, like a cake, something that you baked. These are great. So they're, they really work wonders. And you don't need a lot of utensils, but you need the essential ones. And as I said, 
the cut, the chopping knife is really crucial. I remember when I was in cooking school, we all were given a knife, one knife that we had to use all the time, and it was from Japan. And this is something that my teachers love as well, um, especially Divya. She said her favorite knife is from Japan. They're they're made beautifully. They they sharpen beautifully. So that's a great F FYI. There's another question so funny before I even knew you were doing this TT I was in a cool and unique kitchen store looking for all fun gadgets ch channeling your energy yeah oh I totally believe that synchronicity at its best thanks that's great so then I have my peeler very seldom do I peel but when I do these are really really nice and simple and inexpensive and then i have my adorable little um like measuring bowls i have a bunch of them in different sizes this is a third a half a cup a cup you know they're great and then of course i have this that i use for uh for liquid uh, also measuring bowls, different types of measuring bowls. These are essential. Then I love these. These are like my new finds. I don't normally use plastic. This one, um, these were highly recommended and they don't uh, melt into pots. I, I mean, I wouldn't like let it leave in a heated pot or pan for too long, but they're really, really high quality. They have them in stores as well. And what's nice about them is that they don't tear the material of the pot and pan. And trust me, in this house, there, there's no respect. Maybe with me, but there's no respect with like peeling a scrambled egg off a pot so, or a pan. So these are great. And you just take it off immediately so it doesn't like, you know, change its uh, look. And then I love this little colander. It's cute. They come in different sizes, but this is great if you're making a small little dinner uh, or meal and you really want to wash, you know, your grains, your beans, your lentils. And I love these, these bowls. Now, these bowls come with covers. How convenient. Um, I try to stick with stainless steel or glass in the oven and out. This actually goes into the oven without the covers because the cover is plastic, but it's not touching the food. So these are awesome. You know, and Pyrex makes them. How simple is that? Nothing fancy, but the pots and pans, I highly recommend stainless steel. There's a few other um, good ones out there, but I would stay away from the fancy expensive ones that are pretty dangerous because if it's aluminum or it's a plastic a Teflon, they do melt into the food. You think they, they don't, but they do. And those toxins um, really stick in, in your body. So like you wanna stay away from that, keep it simple. And then one of my staples is parchment paper. If you are using a stainless steel baking sheet, then the baking sheet will probably not need parchment paper unless you want parchment paper because you don't want it to stick. But this, these cooking sheets, these happen to be aluminum. I do not cook with aluminum. So if this is the size I have, because it's not easy to find stainless steel, but it is out there. I put parchment paper on top. And what's really cool about parchment paper is that they're reusable. So that's really great and it saves you money. Um, and let's see what else I want to share with you. I mean, there's other things if you have questions. I have, these, these are staples. They don't even go into the drawer. They stay out on my counter because I use them all the time. So I have different measurements. I usually only use like a half a teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon one and a half uh, tablespoons, half a tablespoon, like those are the measurements I use. And for now, let's just leave it at that and let's check on our cauliflower vegetable in 
a coconut sauce. Oh my gosh, this looks delicious. I am so excited to eat it. You have so many different tastes. You have colors in here. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. And I think I'm ready to add the spinach. Again, we, we add the spinach at the end and within five minutes, it's going to melt into your dish. How beautiful is that? find someone that I'm going to share this dish with because we're two people in the house today but I guess this is going to be great for like today tomorrow and Thursday I don't eat anything after three days so I guess I'll have extra a uh, beautiful thank you sweetie do you have any questions about the vegetables or Ayurveda which is the science of life now, another really important thing to know is that Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga. So if you're a practicing yogi, whether you're a teacher or you, you go to classes or you practice on your own, part of living a yoga life is also eating the right foods and it just goes together so ayurveda is a great way to eat and understand foods understand your body there's different types of body types and learning how to mesh and work with your body type and what you need but that is something that i um, do with my clients and i share that information teach them how to cook teach them how to detox their body so they feel good or lose weight. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this sit here for a little longer. And I think we're good to go for now. So this is my cauliflower vegetable coconut sauce. So excited to have it for lunch. And I really hope that you read my blog because there's so much yummy information there. So have an amazing day, an amazing week. If you're going to vote tonight or you did already, kudos to you. That's my next thing that I'm doing today. And I'm wishing you all an amazing day. Love you guys.